evening, church. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Let's all stand together, if you will. We're going to start the service off tonight with At Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden so found liberty. Calvary by God's word at last my sin I learned then I trembled at the law I spurned till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to so found liberty at Calvary on the third, fourth. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. To me, there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much for being here tonight on this Wednesday evening service. And I appreciate your presence here tonight. I know our pastor does it as well. And uh, Pastor and Miss Hannah and their family have gone out of town for a few days. And uh, I have texted him just to see if they got up there okay, and they did, and I'm sure they're having a good time. But uh, we want to pray for them tonight. The Lord will continue to watch over them, keep them safe, and uh, give them rest and relaxation while they're away. I don't know of, of any two people that work harder at ministry than our pastor and his wife, and uh, we're so blessed and so thankful to have them. So continue to pray for them, if you will. Of course, we'll... We'll have a number of requests that were mentioned after the service tonight, and uh, so we'll be going over the prayer list. But uh, just remember those that are not here for whatever reason tonight, uh, pray for those that are watching online tonight as well. And uh, we just want to pray for the service tonight. Brother Randy Wall is here. He's going to be preaching for us, and we're looking forward to a good service. It's easy sometimes to come in on a Wednesday night, and everybody's tired, and just go through the routine and go through the motions. But I want us to open our hearts tonight and really allow the Lord to speak to us. God has given Brother Randy a message, and that message is specifically for this group of people tonight. And uh, so I hope you'll open your hearts, and let's open our hearts to the Lord for whatever he has for us tonight. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you've given us to come together tonight. Lord, we thank you for our church, and thank you for our pastor and Miss Hannah and their family. Lord, I thank you for what they mean to us, and Lord, how dedicated, how involved they are in the ministry here at Temple Baptist Church. Lord, I thank you for the, the, the members of this church, the group of people that make this church up, not just the members, but those that come regularly, Lord, that are part of this church and part of this assembly. Lord, I thank you for giving us the privilege to, to meet together and fellowship, Lord, to sing the good songs. Lord, encourage our heart. Uh, put a song in our heart uh, to carry with us throughout the week. And, and then, Lord, I thank you for the privilege you give us to come on Wednesday night, Lord. Uh, Wednesday, the middle of the week, and just a time for us to come together and get our batteries charged. And, Lord, I pray that you do just that tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the, the Kids for Truth program across the way there and be with the teen program tonight, Lord. And uh, every part of the service tonight, Lord, and here as well. Lord, I pray that everything that's done on this campus would honor and glorify Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen, amen. So you can remain seated tonight. We're going to sing just a chorus together of God is so good, and God is good. We'll sing it a couple times together. God is so good, God is so good. 
tonight and all God's people said amen. God is certainly good to us. Let me go over just a few announcements tonight. If you'll uh, listen along with us, first of all, don't forget outreach cards. Uh, we're past the Easter past the Easter time. I still got Easter cards up here. Let's go with that one right there. There's hope. Discover hope at Temple Baptist Church. So grab these if you don't have some. A great place to put them on the gas pumps, in bathrooms, a number of different places that you can do that and leave those gospel tracts with people knocking on doors, sharing the gospel with folks and uh, talking about Temple Baptist Church. I heard a preacher say a long time ago, a uh, rooster that won't crow in his own barn uh, needs to be fried up for fried chicken, right? And uh, we have the best here. And uh, so let's, let's promote Temple Baptist Church. Obviously, we want to promote the Lord Jesus Christ, but people are not going to know about our church unless we tell them. So let's invite folks to the house of God and be prepared, have our hearts prepared for the service on this coming Sunday. And then upcoming events that we've got going on, first of all, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. will be visitation and outreach, and that will be rain or shine. Um, and I think somebody's probably in charge of that on Saturday. Of course, Pastor will be back, and he'll be uh, here on Saturday morning for that. But don't forget about visitation on Saturday. And then also our men's fishing tournament this coming Saturday morning. And uh, those that are going uh, to the tournament, they'll meet at the church at 6 a.m. Or you can meet us at the lake at Ocala Lake at 7 a.m. And uh, we'll get an early start out there and uh, wake the bass up and make sure they're ready for us to go, all right? So looking forward to the fishing tournament. And uh, that'll be a great time, men. So don't forget about that, if you will. If you have any questions, of course, you can see Chad Allen. He'll be able to answer those questions for you. And then Saturday evening, men's prayer at 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Don't forget about that, men. Come together. Be a part of the men's prayer time. And let's pray for the services on Sunday. If you're not able to come to men's prayer on Saturday evening, I want to encourage you to pray before you go to bed on Saturday night. You know, I realize that uh, we'll, have, we'll have services here Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and we'll have good services. Um, but we won't have what we need to have unless the Holy Spirit's here. And the way for the Holy Spirit to be here is us, for us to ask him to be here. We need to invite him. You know, the Holy Spirit will never push himself on anybody. And if we're not concerned about him being here, if we don't invite him here, he may just stay out. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our services on Sunday. Lives will be changed. Uh, we've had a lot of visitors over the last few weeks, a lot of visitors. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that. But we want those visitors to come back. Um, how many of you in here got saved the very first time you heard the gospel? Would you raise your hand? Right. Nobody. I had to hear the gospel, and I grew up in church. But I, heard, I had to hear the gospel over and over and over again. And finally, I, I, I listened to the Holy Spirit of God, and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. We need people to come back. Sometimes they need to hear the gospel over and over and over again and uh, to warm their heart. So let's pray that visitors will come back, be a part of our services, and uh, we'll just have a great day on Sunday. And uh, don't forget about the services Sunday morning breakfast, of course, anytime between 9.30 and 10 a.m. We're looking forward to that breakfast on Sunday morning. And then, of course, our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, service at 11 o'clock, and then back on Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We will not have choir practice this coming Sunday evening uh, due to deacons meetings, so don't forget about that deacons as well, that normal meeting at 5 o'clock. All right, one other announcement here Thursday. May the 5th at 7 p.m., this will be a church-wide ladies' meeting. You do need to sign up, ladies, uh, in the vestibule there on the sign-up sheet, so don't forget about that. Make sure to sign up for that meeting. That will be a great time, I'm sure. All right, that's all the announcements I have. Let's all stand together one more time, and uh, we're going to sing another song tonight. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Sing out with us tonight, if you will. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Before you turn around and fellowship, everybody turn around, wave at the camera. I know the pastor's probably watching tonight. He wants to know if you're here. And then now let's turn around and fellowship one with another here just for a few moments. couple more verses together tonight the world behind me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back I have decided I had decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Thank you. Everybody can be seated except for the ushers tonight. And we're going to take our offering. Ushers, if you want to come on at this time, Wednesday night offering goes to missions. missions. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for our missions program here. And uh, we support a lot of missionaries here at home and abroad. And uh, I hope we never get away from uh, trying to pray specifically for our missionaries. I, I know it's easy to say, Lord, help all the missionaries. And we do want the Lord to help all the missionaries. But let's try to be specific in our prayers. The Lord will give them fruit and give them strength. And if you think about everything that we have been through the last couple years as a nation with everything that's going on, and then think about our missionaries and the foreign fields and things that they've had to be a part of as well. So let's pray for our missionaries tonight that God would touch them and use them in a special way. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Matt Honey to lead us to the Lord in prayer, if you will.
Great job tonight and great song, Jesus Saves, Jesus Saves. All right. Well, it's a joy to have Brother Randy Wall with us tonight, and he is no stranger to us. I feel like, I feel like that he's just one of us. I feel like he's a member of Temple Baptist Church uh, because he just has that spirit about him, and uh, him and Miss Pam both are such a blessing to us tonight. So, uh, Brother Randy, you preach, take all the time you need, and we'll close out here in just a little while. Thank you. Well, good evening. It's good to see you on this Wednesday evening. Uh, Lord blessed us with a beautiful day today, didn't he? Amen. Minus the pollen. I feel like I got a glob of it stuck right in the bottom of my throat. And uh, maybe some of you feel like that as well. But it is necessary, right? If we didn't have any pollen and bees and to pollinate, we wouldn't get any good garden stuff and fruit and stuff like that. Now y'all need to get excited about some food. <laughs> I, I remember when I was at home and my dad was pastoring in Mount Erie and uh, he raised a big garden and I hated working in that garden. And we didn't have a tractor, uh, we had a tiller and a hoe. And we'd get somebody to turn the land then we'd get somebody to disc it and then we would lay off the rows and plant and, you know, keep it hoed out and fertilize and all that. And I hated working in that garden, but I sure did enjoy them lunches Mama fixed uh, when you get fresh stuff out of the garden. And uh, then we would buy our milk from a man named Mr. McCraw. And it uh, wasn't pasteurizing. We didn't die. <laughs> Sometimes you thought you was if you got a gallon that where a cow had been eating onions. <laughs> Amen. Or acorns. We took those back. But it would be in a big glass gallon jar and cream about that thick on the top. And Mama would put her glasses in the freezer and get them really cold. And they'd come out and they'd be frosty because we had no air conditioning. And pour you a big old glass of that milk. And we'd have fried squash and green beans and potatoes and pintos and cornbread and hoe cake and sound pretty good, don't it? How many of y'all hadn't eat tonight? Supper, all right? <laughs> Starving you to death, ain't I? But uh, yeah, you have to have that pollen to, to reap the benefits of that. So, But I, I don't like it. I, I want to thank Brother Josh for inviting me to come. I always enjoy coming here and visiting, and I do feel like uh, one of you because I am one of you. You're my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You're kin to me whether you want to be or not. And uh, you say, preacher, I don't like the way that sounds. Well, I do. Uh, you thought I was going to say me neither, didn't you? <laughs> but uh, I appreciate Brother Josh inviting me to come. I'm glad him and Sister Hannah could get away for a while. And uh, everybody needs vacations. Yep. Uh, man, I, I, I like vacations. And uh, and Dad used to take us on vacations. Me and Pam, we go on vacations. We've been home alone for years now and uh, enjoy each other's company. But I'm glad you're here tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about one of probably my favorite Christian in the Bible, and that is the Apostle Paul. So if you're turning your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, we're going to read some uh, verses tonight and then mention a few things to you. Philippians chapter 3, in a moment we'll read verses 4 through 11. Uh, but uh, I want to read one verse in the book of Galatians. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read one verse uh, to get us started here tonight. Everybody's got to have a jumping off place, right? And it reminds me of a joke I heard about two preachers. A preacher went in a, another preacher's motel room and he's sitting there thumbing through his Bible frenziedly and uh, he said what are you doing he said I got a good message I got to find some scripture to go with it uh, <laughs> that might have been in reverse order don't you think uh, but in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1 it says Paul an apostle and then I like this not of men you realize how many men and women are in the pulpits today they're not of God you say you're judging people no I'll let God do that. He can do a much better job than I can. But uh, I can tell you that everybody that stands in the pulpit and supposedly 
proclaims the name of Jesus is not called of God. There are some in it for themselves. But Paul was an apostle. I think you probably know what an apostle is. It means a messenger or one sent forth. So in that sense, we're all apostles, aren't we? We're all to be messengers. It's just not up to Brother Josh to get out the good news that Jesus saves. It's not just up to uh, Miss Hannah to get out the good news that Jesus saved. No, it's up to all of us as God's children. But I'm not an apostle in the sense of the New Testament apostles. I don't have the power of healing. I wish I did. Wouldn't you touch yourself sometimes? <laughs> I'd be anointing myself every morning when I got up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, we would do that. Hey, if I had the power of healing, I'd go to the hospital every day. Amen. Amen? And uh, get rid of people's sicknesses and illnesses and all that. But I don't have the power of healing. But in New Testament days, the apostles did. They had seen Jesus. I have never seen the Lord Jesus Christ. I know he lives because he lives in me in the form of the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, we, we do need to invite the Spirit to have freedom in our services and in our lives. And I have grieved the Spirit of God sometimes, in my, or many times in my life, but even in the service sometimes, I've probably grieved the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, He will go where He's wanted. I believe that. But Paul was an apostle, and it says, Not of men, neither by man. It wasn't, uh, I was talking to a gentleman last week, or no, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday, and uh, he knew I was a preacher, and uh, he said, so just what are you? I thought, we ain't got time for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I could tell you that in, in, in a week's time. And I said, well, I guess officially I am an ordained Baptist minister. And he said, well, are you independent, free will, hard shell, primitive? Yeah, I'm, I, sometimes I'm primitive. <laughs> are y'all? <laughs> sometimes I'm hard shell because I'm bullheaded. But, and I said, no. I said, I'm a dependent Baptist. Just kind of joking. But I, we ought to be dependent Baptists. We're independent. Yes, we are. We, we are uh, uh, self-autonomous, uh, so to speak. We... Uh, don't let others rule what goes on in the local assembly. But, uh, hey, Paul was not, I said, I'm an ordained Baptist minister called of God. And I believe that with all of my heart. God called me. I don't know why. I'm sure there are others that were better. But he called me. And, and I waited about 10 years before I surrendered. But I finally did. And I'm glad that I did. But what an honor it is when God calls someone. And he calls men, as far as preachers go. Amen. Amen. That's still in the Bible. Right. Somebody asked my wife one day, said, uh, what do you think about women preachers? Well, I think they're fine in the car on the way home from church, don't y'all? <laughs> Amen. I've heard some pretty good sermons in my life. You have two fellows, and you just won't admit it. But uh, said, what do you think about women preachers? She said, well... When a woman can be the husband of one man, then we'll talk about it. Well, we're almost there. <laughs> I'm <being> jokingly. <laughs> Joking now. It's sad though, really, isn't it? Uh, but no, God still calls men to preach. That's what the Word of God says. Uh, read it in Timothy. But neither by man, back in verse 1 of, Galat of, of Galatians 1, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So there, Paul tells us just a little bit of an introduction in Galatians. Paul, an apostle, one who was sent, a messenger, sent of God. Uh, he even says specifically to the Gentiles, which is what we are. We're not Jews. We're Gentiles. But aren't you glad that we were grafted in, amen? Aren't you glad that God made a way? Aren't you glad the Word of God says whosoever will? 
Let him come and drink of the water of life freely. And uh, I'm thankful for that. But with that in mind, in Philippians chapter 3, we're going to begin reading in verse 4 and read down through verse 11. And then we'll mention three or four things. And we'll go home and you can eat a peanut butter and cracker or a bowl of cereal or you can eat supper or that might be your supper. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Verse 4, Philippians 3. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Got any confidence in the flesh tonight? Not me. None at all. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Now, Paul is addressing uh, the matter of circumcision with those who still wanted to uh, say that you had to be circumcised to be born again. In other words, they were trying to mix what we would say law and grace when we know that it's by the blood of Jesus, amen, and it's not of works lest any man should boast. And so he's, he's arguing that point with the people here at Philippi. And he said, if anybody else thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh. I'm a, if anybody could trust in the flesh, Paul said, it would be me. And now he, he gives his reasons for saying that. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, an Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. He had it all religiously, didn't he? He had uh, crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, checked all the boxes, whatever you want to call it. And so in verse 6, he says, now, concerning zeal, I, he said, persecuting the church, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He met all the criteria. Uh, he was a powerful man in the religious world. But guess what? He was on his way to hell. You can be the most, you can be the best Baptist in the world and still go to hell. You can be the best Presbyterian or Methodist or Episcopalian or Catholic or whatever. You can be the best of all of that religiously. But if you've never been born again, you're not going to go to heaven. There, there is no other way, amen, but through the blood. Hey, I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit of God, Brother Holly was talking about the Holy Spirit of God. I, the Holy Spirit of God is what makes the difference. Because I was raised in a pastor's home. I was raised in a preacher's home. Uh, I went to church every Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every revival meeting. We had revival meetings back when you had two-week meetings. One, uh, one time uh, uh, when I was pastoring, a, a guy come up and we were having a Sunday through Wednesday meeting. And he said, why don't we have any week-long meetings anymore? I said, because I can't get you here three nights. <laughs> that might not have been the right thing. <laughs> But he didn't ask me that anymore. <laughs> but but I, I can remember uh, when I was a kid and growing up as a teenager, we would get a car load almost every night and go to a meeting somewhere and uh, be, be in church almost uh, every, every night, you see. But hey, you can do all of that and still go to hell, you see. It's a good thing. It's a whole lot better place to be than it is the bar room, ain't it? Yeah, it is, but that won't get you to heaven. Verse 7, notice now, Paul had all of this, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Notice this, for whom I have suffered the loss of how much? All things. I doubt if there's anybody in here that can say that tonight. I can't. I, I haven't suffered the loss of all things. I don't know that I want to. Hey Amen. I'm just being honest with you. I, I don't know that there, uh, I don't know if there, there might, I'm sure there's some Paul somewhere in this world today uh, concerning this, but, but I don't know. I haven't got there yet. Maybe you have. But he said, I counted, uh, I counted all these, the loss I uh, count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Notice this, and do count them but dung. That I, this trash, 
You know, I don't believe Paul had hardly anything in this world that he could call his own. He, he went from city to city. He went from town to town. Uh, we read where he didn't, he didn't uh, and I'm not advocating this, but he, he, he wouldn't take a salary. Why? He didn't want to be chargeable to any man. He, he made his own way. And I'm not necessarily advocating that in this day. Hey, if you got a pastor and he has a family, you ought to take care of him. I believe that you do. And hey, Philippians chapter 4, a lot of times we read that uh, verse uh, uh, about my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. That, I believe that's written to the church. If you read it in correct context, we use it a lot of times individually and that's okay. But I believe if a church takes care of its pastor and his family, that God will supply every need that that church has, according to Philippians 4.19. So he said, I count them but dung that I may win Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Do you want to know him? Yeah, intimately, right? How many of y'all been married more than 20 years? Raise your hand if you're not afraid to. Not ashamed of it, all right. How many of you been married more than 30 years? 40? 50? I've got to put mine down now. <laughs> hey, if your wife is still living and your husband is still living, do you know them better now than you did when you first got married? Do you? Some of you know them better than you want to, right? <laughs> Pam and I, we've been married... 47 years? I got it wrong the other day. I said 46. You know, time flies when you're having fun. And, uh, <laughs> but, but you know what? We know each other a lot better. We knew each other not long after I first saw her. She rode the church bus to my dad's church. I was 13 years old. She was 12. Some of you know the story. I said, hmm, I want to get to know her. Don't look at me like that. I hope you felt that way about the woman you're married to or the man that you're married to. I said, whom? I want to get to know her. So uh, I had, after she'd come a few Sundays, I had one of my friends to go ask her, could I sit with her in church? I was too bashful. Can you imagine me being bashful? I ain't never met a stranger now. I mean, I talk to everybody and anybody. It don't matter. But I said, I said, go over there. It was either Wade Hill or Glenn Pruitt or Wayne Jones. I can't remember. I said, go over and ask her, can I sit with her? And she made a fatal error. She said, yeah. <laughs> and ever since then, she'd be wishing she got on another church bus. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, but we know each other a lot better than we did when I first met her. Hey, if you've been saved any length of time at all in your life, you ought to know Jesus Christ better than you did when you first got saved, amen? You ought to be more acquainted with him than you were when you first got born again. You ought to know more about him. You ought to be more intimate with him. Amen. It's sad when, when people save 30 years and they're no further along in their Christian journey than they were when they first got saved. And they don't know any more about the goodness of God than they did when they first got Hey, you miss out on so much by doing that. And, and by the way, it's not a good relationship when you do that. If you don't take some interest in your spouse, it ain't going to be a good relationship, is it? No, you better pay them some attention and find out about them. And, and know what they like and what they don't like. So you know what to get them. And buy them gifts. Amen. All right. Boy, y'all really getting into that part. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch and go to marriage. No, that I may know him, verse 10, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, talking about the Paul the Apostle, Paul the Messenger. As I said, probably my favorite Christian in the Bible. Maybe you have yours. Maybe yours is Simon Peter. Maybe it's Stephen. Uh, maybe it's John the Baptist or whoever. But Paul happens to be mine. And I jotted down a few things one day a long time ago. And I want to share them with you tonight. And I hope they'll be a blessing to us about Paul the Apostle. Number one is this. He had a great conversion. 
say, wait a minute, preacher. Aren't all, we're talking about conversion. I'm talking about being saved. I'm talking about being born again. He had a, you say, but I thought all conversions are great. They are. You say, man, I wish I'd have been here when Jesus was on this earth so I could have saw all the miracles. The greatest miracle you'll ever see is if somebody gets born again. Amen. 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 We don't make much of it anymore, or at least a lot of places don't. Uh, and, and, and salvation is fewer and farther between. There, you can still get a lot of professions out of people. Amen. You can go up to the average person most of the time and say, would you like to go to heaven? And most people will say yes. And, they, and you can say, well, pray this prayer and you're going to heaven. Are they? I don't know. You can pray a prayer and still not go to heaven. Right. Amen. Holy Spirit's got to draw you. Amen. You got to believe on him. You got to put your faith and trust in him. You got to be genuine about that thing. But hey, I, I want you to think back tonight. Think about when you got saved. You ever just stop and think about the day that you got saved or the night that you got saved or the place that you got saved, the great conversion that took place in your life. Hey, Paul, was, Paul recorded his in Acts chapter 9 or, or Luke did in Acts chapter 9 about the salvation, but Paul spoke of it many times in his life. But hey, we ought to go, hey, we, I believe we ought to do it every day. Go back to the place and think about the day that God saved us and changed our life. It might encourage us. I, I think about the day that I got saved. I don't know the exact day. I don't know the exact date. I, it was in November of 1978, the best of my recollection. I do remember that I was going down Highway 52 South in a blue Pinto pony. I'll never forget that. If you ever had a pony, Pinto pony, you won't forget it. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. It ain't not a Pinto bean. Talking about a pinto pony like you drive. Light blue. Had a little stripe on the side with a pony on it. But I had been under conviction for probably a couple of months. And God, hey, I had heard all kinds of preaching. I'd heard the best preachers. I'd heard the word of God preached. It never had one ounce of effect on me. It went right over my head in one ear and out the other. But I'm going to tell you something. When the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my heart... Then the planting of that word eventually brought forth fruit. And that day going down Highway 52, I remember the day that I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother Matt, I said, I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I've tried everything the world's got to offer at 21 years of age. And, and as, it, as if you only, as only can do, I got gloriously saved. There ain't no other way to get saved, amen. Then gloriously converted. I got converted, amen. What did you do? I changed directions. You ought to be able to remember that day. I hope you can go back. <laughs> and, and by the way, everybody's circumstances, I don't want to say experience, I won't use that word, but everybody, everybody's circumstances and places. Not, some people got saved out in the yard. Some people got saved at church. Some people got sa saved at home. Some people got saved in a car like I. Some people got saved in the backer field. Yeah. It's not important so much about the place. It's important that it happened. But Paul, man, he had a great conversion. Hey, can I tell you something? And I'm guilty. And I'll mention this a little bit there uh, on the third point. But we've got something worth sharing. And we've got something worth getting excited about. I was talking to a preacher today and we were talking about, I said, you have a good day last Sunday, being Easter Sunday, you know, you usually have a bigger crowd. You'll have some people come in that normally wouldn't be here. And uh, he was talking about, he said, yeah, we had all that big day and all of that. He said, but it's like the next Sunday, you just go back to normal. And I said, yeah, sometimes if we're not careful, every Sunday, We'll walk away from the house of God and it'll be like it never happened in our lives. It won't have any effect upon us at all. We've, done, we've just put a check mark in our box in heaven because we attended. I'm being facetious about that. But hey, you know, in a sense, 
Brother Holly was talking about Easter, and I'm sure y'all had a good Sunday. But every day ought to be what we call Easter. We ought to have an Easter Monday and an Easter Tuesday and an Easter Wednesday today. Why? Because he still lives. He's still alive, amen. He didn't go Sunday night when the sun went down. He didn't go get back in the tomb. We act like it sometimes, don't we, on Monday morning? Oh, he's back in the tomb now. <laughs> We're about half dead. Been hunting eggs. Y'all hide your own eggs now? Get old enough? Still can't find them. <laughs> I saw one, one church, they, they had, this might be something y'all want to try, Brother Holly and Brother Josh. They dropped the eggs out of a helicopter. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know what they had in them. I hope it wasn't rocks. <laughs> but man, it, it, they had, it looked like they had about 50 kids. I watched a little video. It looked like they had about 50 kids up on the hill. This helicopter flew in, amen. All of a sudden, it started raining eggs. And man, when, it, when all them eggs hit the ground, they turned them kids loose. It looked like a herd of goats. Screaming and hollering and carrying on. But hey, we ought to get excited about our conversion. We ought to get excited about what God's done for us. Just like Paul talked about his and what happened to him on the road to Damascus. He ran head on into the Lord one day and a light shone right about him. And he got converted. But not only did he have a great conversion, but number two, he had great convictions. Do you know we still need to have convictions in the day in which we live? People don't like to hear about that. So, oh, now he done quit preaching and done went to meddling. You know, preaching's good as long as you ain't getting in my tater patch. As long as you ain't plowing my corn. Amen. Get him, preacher. Well, you heard, you, heard that, you heard that old story about this church and the preacher. Every time the, this man would go out the door... He'd say, man, if they'd have been here today, you'd have got them. You got them today, didn't you, preacher? You laid it on them today, preacher. He, every Sunday they'd go out. You got them today, preacher. That's the way to show them. Well, snowed a big snow, and there wasn't nobody there but him and that man. He said, I got him now. <laughs> he, he can't say it this time. If they, you got them today, preacher. And, and so, like I said before, when he went out the door, he said, if they'd have been here, preacher, you'd have got them. <laughs> It's never for us, is it? But hey, this is still a day to have great convictions. Uh, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'll read you a few verses here. Verse 14 says, Be ye not in unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? You ever, you ever heard this term politically, and I, I'm not going to get political too much tonight, reaching across the aisle. I ain't reaching across the aisle to meet the devil halfway. Yeah, amen. I, and I'm not saying, not saying that necessarily politically. But I, I, no, we don't need to compromise our standards and our convictions, amen. And hey, you, you're to be cordial to people. Uh, I'm not trying to cram anything. I'm not trying to be holier than thou or cram it down your throat or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what, friend. We need to keep some convictions in our life. Amen. God never called the church to blend in with the world. I'm so thankful that Brother Josh stands up for that which is right and has some standards and convictions in the house of God, amen, and still preaches the whole counsel of God. You ought to thank God for that here at Temple Baptist Church, amen, because it ain't like that everywhere. It's not, it's not even like that in all independent Baptist churches, by the way, because I've been in a few where it ain't. And they don't have the convictions that they used to have. They don't have the standards that they used to have. But why is that? Verse 15, what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Friend, I, I don't think I'm better than anybody else, but I can't worship with an unsaved, I mean, I can't fellowship with an unsaved person like I can a saved person. We don't have kindred spirit. We have different fathers. What agreement, verse 16, hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, Paul says, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1 of Second Corinthians says, 
Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul had some convictions, didn't he? You say, well, preacher, how do I, how do I, there's some things that are black and white, amen? You don't have to say, well, I don't know if that's God's will or not. Oh, there, but, but I've, I've always used this in my life in Romans chapter 14. Maybe you can use it in your life. I don't know. But, but Paul is talking about uh, disputations that they have. And, and he's talking about, I think, eating meats that were offered to idols. We don't have a problem with that in this day, do y'all? He's talking about rooster won't crow in his own barn. You know, need to make fried chicken out of them. I say amen to that. But, but Paul's talking about those that would uh, eat meat that was offered to idols and they weren't strong enough in the faith or whatever uh, that, that they couldn't do that and, and that it wouldn't have a, an effect on them. You say, well, preacher, how do you know? And I don't want to say gray areas because I don't like that term. But you say, how do you know? It, do you think there's something that I might could do that wouldn't be sin in my life that might be sin for you. Yeah, we have, we have convictions. There's, there's areas in our life that you might, I ain't talking about going out and getting drunk and, and stuff like that. But notice in Romans 14, verse 5, I'll use this verse. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. But here's what I go by. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. How is it with you and the, between you and the Lord? And by the way, you ought to draw the line on the side of uh, caution. You ought to draw the line on the side of conservatism. If, if you even think it might be wrong, don't do it. If it's, it's, Brother Haynes, if it's what we would call, well, maybe it, it could go either way. To err on the side of biblical conservatism. And do that which is right in the sight of God. Like Dr. Bob Jones Sr. used to say, if a star fall out of heaven, just do right. You'll never go wrong doing right. So he had, he had great convictions. Number three, <laughs> I was kidding with Brother Mike. I said, I know this ain't a word, but I just made it up. He was a great converser. <laughs> converser ain't a word, but it is now. Converse is... But not er. I didn't do well in English. <laughs> I didn't. I can com communicate a little bit, but I didn't like English. My 10th grade English teacher, <laughs> I won't call her name, bless her soul, we never hit it off. Can you imagine somebody not liking me <laughs> as a teenager? But my, my, my sophomore year, I stayed in the office more than I stayed in class. We had a room at North Surrey High School, room two. That's where you got sent when your teacher no longer wanted your company. In my sophomore year in English class, I stayed in room two a lot in sixth period. My assistant principal was Clyde O. Falk. Me and him got to be just like that my sophomore year. I mean, we was tight. He come in there, stick his head in the door, and, all right, Wall, you ready to go to work? I moved pianos, I swept every inch of the North Surrey High School. It's a lot better than English. <laughs> hey, man, I'd a whole lot rather sweep a floor than to diagram a sentence. I know what I'm trying to say. You might not, but I do. <laughs> as long as I know, I don't care. <laughs> I might not use the right pronoun or verb or adjective. adjective. <laughs> but uh, I, I, can, I can communicate. But I, he was a great converser. He knew how to witness, didn't he? Isn't it amazing? We can talk about everything, but Witness, we can witness about everything but Jesus. Y'all have any trouble with that? Paul didn't have no trouble with that. He told it everywhere he went. He, it, if you read Acts chapter 20 and Acts chapter 26, man, every chance he got, he told about, you say, well, I don't know how to witness. Tell them how you got saved. 
That's all you got to do. Tell them about your salvation. Tell them about your conversion. That'll get your job done. There'll be enough gospel mixed in that that they'll get the message. But he was a great converser. I won't spend a lot of time on that one. But number four in closing, there was a great, he had a great conclusion in his life. How many of y'all ever started out doing a project and it didn't end up too well? Whew, I'm a good starter. I ain't much of a finisher. I, I, I have a lot of... <laughs> I start out with good intentions, amen. And then it's like, ah, you never believe it or not, but I, I, am, uh, I got the attention span of a three-year-old. I mean, I enjoy playing golf, but after nine holes, I'm ready to do something else. I start hunting balls. Amen. <laughs> a lot of times because of the game, we're just sorry. <laughs> But, but it's like, I get bored real easy with stuff, you know. You know, all right, I, you know, work 30 minutes on a project. All right, I got that figured out. What's next? <laughs> Until you see that list on the refrigerator. But hey, Paul had a great conclusion, didn't he? He said, I fought a good fight. He finished. You know, you can't, <laughs> you can't necessarily start out wrong when you get saved. But uh, not many people remember where people start. They remember where we finish. I don't follow racing anymore. I used to. But not many people remember who won the pole. But a lot of people remember who finished. Watch the golf tournament. Not, not many people, they don't think about how did you start out on the first day of a four-day tournament. They don't remember that you shot seven under that day. They just remember what was your final score. Where did you finish? Hey, where are we going to finish in the scope of life? What will people say about us if they come by and view our body and make a comment? Can they say the same thing about us that they said about Paul that he had a great conclusion? He was a, he was a good finisher. Thank God for the saints of God that finish. They started out right. Hey, my daddy's, my daddy been dead, uh, my goodness, nine or ten years now. And, and you know what always impressed me? I know, I know he was my daddy. But he was, he started, he finished up the same ways. He was preaching the same things, the same way, the same Bible. He didn't change Bibles. He stuck with the King James. He, he didn't change his message. He didn't water it down. He didn't candy coat it. But he finished up just like he started out. And I remember that about him. How will, how will we finish? Would you stand tonight? Brother Holly's coming. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Have a word of prayer and then he can close the service as God leads. Father, Lord, I, I love to study about the Apostle Paul. Uh, he always makes me ashamed of my life. Uh, Lord, because I can't say the things he said, he counted everything as but dung, that he might gain Christ. Lord, help us at least to uh, shoot for that mark, and Lord, uh, to finish up well in this race that we run, Father. Speak to our hearts tonight. Help these things to embed in our mind and our hearts. Just have your will and way, I pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Holly, you come if you would. Let's remain standing. Heads bowed, eyes closed tonight. How many of you would say with me tonight, you know, Brother Steve, I, I struggle every day. I battle sin every day. I battle myself every day. But I want to finish well. How many of you would raise your hand and testify to that tonight? I want to finish well. I want to be able to stand before the Lord one day and Him look at me and so you wasn't a whole lot, but, but you finished well. Let's just finish well. What a good message tonight. I was talking to the Lord this morning and just thanking God for my salvation, for tugging on my heart. That's where my life began. I don't, I don't remember much about my life before I got saved, but boy, I sure remember everything since I've been saved. God sure has been good. 
all to Jesus I surrender. Maybe there in the quietness of your seat, you just want to say, Lord, thank you for saving me, but Lord, give me the strength to finish well. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't get lazy. Let's just keep serving the Lord, pleasing God, having convictions, telling other people about Jesus Christ, and finish well. Father, we thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for Brother Randy, Ms. Pam, Lord. Thank you for their fellowship, their friendship, Lord. Thank you for using them to be a blessing to our church. And Lord, I thank you for the confidence that our pastor has put in them. Lord, I pray that tonight, Lord, again, you'll continue to watch over our pastor and Miss Hannah, their family, and Brother Mark, Miss Sharon. Lord, give them safety as they travel home. Continue to give them rest, Lord in the days ahead. Bless our church, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated tonight. We're going to have just a few prayer requests. I want to go over the prayer list tonight, and we'll do this briefly and then have another word of prayer at the end tonight. I want to ask you to do this, if you will. I know the tendency is sometimes when uh, we go through a long prayer list that things have a tendency to blend together, and then we get to the end and somebody leads in prayer, and if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves listening to what they're praying instead of praying ourselves. So I want to encourage all of us tonight, just take one or two or three of these requests, as we mentioned them tonight, and just kind of hold them in your heart. And when we have prayer time together here in just a few moments, I want us to, to just ask the Lord to work in those particular things and ask God to answer those prayers. First of all, let's remember our shut-ins tonight. You know, there are so many that would love to be here if they were able And there's many that are not able, so let's continue to remember our shut-ins. The Lord would watch over them. And then we've already mentioned our missionaries tonight, but let's continue to remember our missionaries in prayer, that God would help them, give them strength, and give them fruit for their labor. And then, obviously, we want to pray for the salvation of souls. Uh, I mentioned Sunday night. Our, Our church is a free clinic every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And the, the reality is this is, a, this is to be a soul-winning station. We have a lot of programs, a lot of things that go on around here, but our main goal is to see people saved. That's the bottom line. And we just need to pray God can work in hearts, so let's pray for folks to be saved, and God will work in their hearts again this coming Sunday. Pastor has a couple specials that he had put here on the list. It just says Pastor Special. So a couple of those things, let's remember that in prayer. And then uh, remember Zor, uh, Zor May and, and Wayne Richardson. Uh, of course, Wayne had an episode this past, this past Sunday, I believe it was, and uh, he's home, but uh, just really feeble. And we need to pray for these two that God will give them strength and help them. And uh, remember that, if you will. And then I'm going to mention just a few names here, um, just call them off rather quickly, but remember these folks in prayer, if you will. Uh, Miss Linda Hackler, uh, Bonnie Smith's brother, Wanda Michaels. Uh, Miss Hannah Craig, Miss Kay Marion, uh, remember Miss Beverly Smith, uh, Mariah and Shalisa's sister um, is losing brain cells. Just remember that request. And then Billy Owen uh, has liver cancer. Let's continue to remember her in prayer. And then Laverne Smith uh, is in recovery right now. And then we want to pray for our nation. Amen. Pray for our leaders, our, our president, our Congress, our state leaders, our local leaders, uh, that God would give them wisdom. And uh, people don't have to be saved for God to give them wisdom. The reality is God can give wisdom to anybody he wants to. And uh, he can work in people's hearts even when they're lost. So uh, let's pray that God would work in their hearts and give them direction, make good decisions for our nation. And then remember our churches, not just Temple Baptist Church. Of course, our focus, obviously we're here. Our focus is on our church. But let's remember churches that are sharing the gospel. This is a team effort. We're the body of Christ. And we've got one goal, and that is to reach as many people as we can before the Lord comes back. So let's remember all of our churches this coming Sunday, this coming Lord's Day. Then remember Tootie and Linda, if you will, and God will continue to, to touch them, watch over them in their health situation. Miss Ann Jackson with her eye situation there, continue to remember her in prayer. And then remember Miss Gladys Belcher tonight, that God would touch her, strengthen her as well with her physical issues Miss Vicki Cincinnati, her father had a stroke recently. We want to remember him in prayer and his recovery, uh, that God would work in his physical situation as well. 
Lawrence Miller is to have surgery on May the 10th. So uh, remember Lawrence in prayer. Lawrence has been uh, really had a tough time physically for, for really months now. And uh, so he's going to be having that surgery. Just pay, pr pray that the surgery is successful and God will give the doctor's wisdom there for that surgery on May the 10th. And then Daniel and Donna Holly with their newborn, um, they actually came tonight. They're over at team meeting tonight. I went over there and nobody ever knew I walked in the door. So I just, you know, I just came on back over. Uh, anytime there's a newborn baby around, that's where the focus is. So, uh, but continue to remember them in prayer, if you will. Donna's recovering nicely. And uh, remember Carlin, if you will. And then finally, Gene Adams is having surgery on his back on Tuesday, April the, let's see, it says 419. That was yesterday. All right. I'll get my dates right here. So hopefully that, that surgery was successful. Anybody heard from, from Brother Gene? Okay, Miss Jean. All right. Thank you so much. I have, I said Brother Jean here, spelled G-E-N-E, -E, and that's probably how it's spelled, and I apologize for that. But she is coming home then. Okay, awesome, good. So surgery was successful there. Let's remember that, if you will. All right, let's do this tonight. We don't have a whole lot of time here, but uh, if you have a, if you have a unspoken request tonight and you want us just to pray for, the Lord knows your heart. Would you raise your hand tonight? We certainly want to pray for these things that God would, uh, would work in hearts and lives. Uh, there are obviously more needs here tonight than there are people. Go ahead, brother. Oh, wow. All right. Is she in the hospital or is she at home? Okay. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. So let's continue to remember her. Susan Whitehart, battling COVID for the last couple of weeks and uh, uh, is making some improvement. All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. You can just remain seated there in your seat if you want to. And uh, just, just bow your head. Think about these needs. Just pick out a couple things. I'm going to lead us in prayer tonight. And uh, let's just ask God to do a work, not only in these, in these requests and in our hearts as well, but uh, let's just ask God to do something special here on the Lord's Day and uh, that God would change lives. All right, let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, again for the privilege we've had to come together tonight. Lord, I thank you for our pastor and Miss Hannah, their family. Lord, we miss them so much when they're away. It's just, just not the same. Uh, but Lord, I'm thankful that even when they're not here, Lord, that you're here. You still meet with us. And, uh, Lord, your Holy Spirit can move freely and work in hearts and touch lives. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God we heard preached tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll give us the strength, the wisdom to follow the example of the Apostle Paul, who ultimately followed the example of Jesus Christ. The Lord was a witness, told other people about Jesus, had convictions, had standards, lived a separated life, and finished well. Lord, I pray that you'll give us, again, the strength and the wisdom day by day to finish well. We're not going to be perfect. We ought to strive to be, Lord, but we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail. We're going to sin, sometimes on purpose, or we're just going to, we're going to fail you. But I thank you for your forgiveness and your love and your mercy and your grace and your long-suffering and your patience and your kindness and your goodness, Lord, and your meekness and your gentleness, all these things, Lord, that you are to us. We thank you for that tonight. So many requests on our prayer list, Lord, and you know the needs. Lord, as your people are calling out to you tonight, Lord, I am confident that you're hearing what we pray. Lord, we're asking you to intervene. We're asking you to meet needs, and we're asking it according to your will. Lord, we know that you are able to do anything that you want to do. You're able to do exceeding and abundantly above anything we can ask or think or things that we can't even think about. You're able to do far greater. So we ask you, Lord, to work in those situations. Lord, we ask you once again that you would uh, show up here on Sunday, Lord, that you'd meet with us, 
that you would draw in people, Lord, that are, that are lost, and that you would convict hearts. Help us as your people, Lord, just to, to, to step out of the way. And, Lord, I don't want to be a hindrance. I don't want my selfish pride to get in the way. I want you to be able to do what you want to do. And I know that's the desire of our pastor as well. So please go with us, Lord. Go with us over these next few days. Protect us and watch over us, Lord. We understand that safety comes from you, and we're asking for your protection, your help, and your guidance, and your strength. Bless us tonight, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Give us safety as we travel home. Thank you so much, Lord, for the faithful ones, for those who are here tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd bless them for being here tonight. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank you again tonight. Thank you so much for coming and being part of our Wednesday night service. And uh, make sure the pastor's probably already logged off, but you can wave at the camera anyway if you want to. And I'm sure he's looking around tonight seeing who's here. So uh, anyway, hope you have a great night. God bless you.